welcome back. I've got a fascinating experiment for you today and one that changed the whole course of physics and the way that we look at matter. This one is a little bit of quantum physics and it's called electron diffraction. You might remember from an earlier video I did on the photoelectric effect that we showed that when we shone one photon onto a piece of zinc, out came one electron. Two photons, two electrons. In other words, you could count the electrons and they behave like individual particles. Electrons have a mass, so you can imagine them as a tiny little ball bearing, as it were, orbiting an atom or freely moving in a wire, but you imagine them as a particle. And today, we're going to completely change that view. So let's look at the apparatus we're going to use today to demonstrate electron diffraction. I've got a tube here that's exactly like the one I showed in an earlier video, which is an evacuated glass tube, and in it is an electron gun. So you can have a look at that if you want to remember how the electron gun works. But the one change we've got here is, in front of the electron gun, I've got a sample holder, and inside that is a very, very thin piece of graphite. Now, what that is, is a series of atoms of carbon regularly arranged in a lattice or in a crystal. And what we're going to do is fire individual electrons at that crystal lattice and see what happens on the fluorescent screen of the tube. So, let's see if we can guess what happens first. Electrons we imagine as particles, and we can imagine the graphite crystal as being a series of atoms separated. In fact, a better model might be a crisscross shape like this. So, if we were to fire individual electron particles at this, we'd expect them to go through the gaps, and when they hit the atoms, to not go through. So I suppose what we'd expect is a speckly pattern of dots all over the screen, with individual electrons going through each gap in the crystal lattice. So let's get our electron gun working and fire high energy electrons into the graphite sample. So 6.3 volts into the heater, and all that does is produce a source of electrons. Let's force them off the heater by making it very, very negative. So minus 5,000 volts. And let's make the front of the electron gun, the anode, very positive, And that goes into the positive terminal of the power supply. I can see the filament glowing already. So all we've got to do to accelerate the electrons through the electron gun is turn up the anode voltage. And what we're going to do in a second is switch the lights off in the room and I'm going to turn the screen to face you and let's see what image we get on the screen. So I've got the screen facing you. Let's turn up the accelerating voltage and let's see what we get. And what we get on the screen is absolutely remarkable. It's not what we expected at all. We thought we'd get lots of dots as the electron particles went through gaps in the atoms. But instead, what you see is a series of rings. And if you look at them across wise, they're bright in the middle, then dark, then bright, then dark, going out both sides from the central dot. And this should remind you of diffraction and interference patterns, where you get bright and dark fringes. But hang on, that only works with waves. So what you're seeing here is really bizarre, that we're getting an interference or diffraction pattern And what's happening is the electrons are passing through the gaps in the atoms and they're diffracting and interfering with each other. In other words, they're behaving like waves. So hang on, what is it now? Is an electron a particle or is an electron a wave? And what you might know of quantum physics is that we have the concept of wave-particle duality. And this experiment can only be explained in terms of electrons being waves. So this is a very odd effect indeed. Electrons are behaving like waves and causing a diffraction pattern on the front of the tube. This idea was first suggested by a very young man called Louis de Broglie, who was a member of the French nobility, and he did it in his PhD thesis in 1924. It had not yet been observed, and it wasn't until 1927 that the effect of particle diffraction and interference was observed, And in 1929, he rightly got a Nobel Prize for this. So now for the tough explanation. 
If you remember, our electron gun had 5,000 volts across it. So it gave the electrons 5,000 electron volts of kinetic energy. If they've got kinetic energy and they indeed have a mass, then they have momentum. And what Louis de Broglie said is that particles that have momentum will also have a wave-like property. They will have an associated wavelength. And that wavelength is equal to the Planck's constant H divided by the momentum MV. So you can imagine particle electrons with their mass having a momentum MV, mass times velocity, hitting the graphite sample, behaving like waves, and producing a diffraction pattern that allows us to back calculate from their wavelength the spacing between the atoms. And we get about one times 10 to the minus 10 meters. So a quick recap. If you remember, the electron gun had a graphite sample in front of it, and that graphite behaves like a crisscross grill. So the electrons go through the grill, diffract, and what you see on the screen is the interference pattern of those diffracting electrons. There is no way we could get this image on the screen if electrons were behaving like particles. They must be diffracting and therefore electrons must be behaving like waves. So you've seen wave particle duality in my videos now. You've seen electrons behaving like particles and today we see electrons behaving like waves. Bit of an A-level experiment, that one, but a really interesting one and a good introduction to some quantum physics. So, I hope you enjoyed that video and I look forward to seeing you again next time.